Welcome art lovers to the art vlog with me George Dopamine. Today I'm taking you to King's Cross where I'm a bit late in the, in the season to see the David Hockney um, experience I think we'll call it at Lightroom. Now as you probably have realized if you watch the art vlog I have not covered things like the Van Gogh Expos and all of those kind of things because I like to cover original art and to be honest I've been to one of those Van Gogh shows at their worst they're like sitting in a room with a screen safe and I honestly don't get that much out of them you might disagree if you do post in the comments the reason that I'm covering David Hockney at Lightroom is because this is in collaboration with the artist himself and I think it's fair to say that David Hockney um, views this as a piece of work like as a full piece of art so I'm really intrigued it was in my top 10 things to be excited about from 2023 finally here and I'm really excited to see what it's like I would say it's quite expensive for I think what's going to be a 50 minute show so we will see anyway here we are at the Lightroom I'm going to spin you round so come and join us as we head inside After passing through a very pleasant bar, you, you um, pass down an industrial corridor and into the wonderful space. You're greeted by David Hockney's voice. And as you can see, there's a range of seating areas. I advise the one closest to you at the bottom right of the screen. This is a 360 um, degree immersive experience. And it's really, really powerful. I fell in love with the space straight away. Um, I do advise you go up into the viewing area to sort of have a, a view of this as well. It's up quite a few flights of stairs. I think there's a lift as well. Um, but you get a different perspective there. You're not any more immersed in it, but you can sort of view the whole pitch, the whole, um, the whole profile, if you like, of the work. I was always interested in the arrival aspect of what comes first. He was the guy in the middle of white, frosty clouds, two people of Norman. Each brushed her up if he could, so you're watching me paint. The work is themed into different sections and there's constant references on the walls back to Hockney working at different stages of his artistic career. And what makes this unique is obviously the hearing of Hockney's voice um, as he takes us through his art. Some of the themes refer directly to different practices that Hockney explores as part of his artistic career, such as this one drawing with a camera, which which investigates how he used images um, to to find a new form of expression. Some of the themes reference specific moments in artistic time, like this one, Pools, which references his um, love affair with the swimming pools of Los Angeles, which he went to in the 1960s. And what's really interesting is in this, in this sort of uh, experience, we hear about how the geography of Los Angeles affected his art so strikingly. Some of the themes are an art history lesson here. Hockney takes us through his view of perspective and how he sort of moved away from the teachings of his own art school experience. Making it reverse perspective that that's what would happen if you move past it. So I walked around and taking the pictures. As you hope you can see here, the technology captures 
the richness of Hockney's colours spectacularly. A big part of the show is is the section on Hockney painting the stage, um, which explores his his prolific creation of, of opera sets. So overall, would I recommend um, David Hockney's Lightroom? Um, I think if you're a Hockney fan, obviously it is a must-see if you haven't been already and you probably will have done. But if you're not, I would probably say save your hard-earned pennies for other shows because there's so many coming up this autumn. Um, if we start with the positives, I thought the space itself was excellent. It was very welcoming upstairs. And the, the tech and the specification and the seamlessness of the technology is a um, cut above the te temporary um, exhibitions I talked about in the introduction, things like Van Gogh's Expo. It's a really exciting space space um, and I think that what I enjoyed the most as well as hearing David Hockney's voice he sounded very very frail because he's obviously elderly um, was seeing the iPad paintings actually being created in front of your eyes in, when I've seen them on the walls of galleries like the Royal Academy I'm not a massive fan of them he obviously produces nearly all his work now on iPads but the fact is that an iPad can save every single stroke that the um, artist creates so that can then be replayed back and you get the privilege of seeing the works being created in front of your eyes um, obviously sped up and um, I thought that worked really well and I thought some of the more visually dramatic pieces like the Wagner Drive video work from I think the 1980s that worked incredibly well as well and um, because it was sort of widescreen American um, it, landscapes uh, really because you felt surrounded by them which was excellent i didn't think the classic hockney works from los angeles in the 1960s gained anything at all from being um showed in this space they seem quite flat and static um, and i've much preferred it well i have much preferred it when i've seen them on the walls of galleries and you can see a classic at the capturing the moment exhibition up until january at tate modern um, there was also a very long section on opera and in some ways this was interesting because it reminded us that a large part of Hockney's career often forgotten when you're looking at his work in galleries is designing these huge sets for operas both Glyndebourne in Britain and the Metropolitan um, Opera in New York and um, it was interesting to be reminded of this but that kind of dominated in lots of ways the the exhibition because it was easy to bring these things to life, not easy but it was easier to bring these things to life and so in a way that was a bit that, that section kind of was too long compared to the others for me and obviously I totally understood why it couldn't, wasn't in any way intended to be a narrative exploration of his work because it's played on loop and art that was coming at any moment in time that wouldn't work because you might start at the end of his life or halfway through having said that i didn't think that the themes were all altogether produced a cohesive experience some of them were really really interesting some of them were about periods of his art some of them were about about themes like looking closely or looking carefully. That was a bit um, of mixed up for me and, and didn't flow as much. And I have to say, I went with somebody who absolutely loves Cockney and they did enjoy it, but they, they did agree with me on that. Um, so overall, and, and I think I have to mention as well, the cost, um, it was 25, 26 pounds a ticket. This was on a Friday evening and the price does vary. It's cheaper if you go on a weekday. Um, that is very, very expensive. I mean, I think that's as, you know, almost as much as I paid for a, for a, for a art show, which isn't a total one-off, one-day event. So for me, it wasn't worth that much. It was 50 minutes. It was enjoyable though and I'm most excited about the space itself because I think it was sort of underutilised in this very first experience but this is a permanent space and artists are going to be on show there and I think it's going to be um, it's going to be, you know, a real potential, wonderful space for video artists, especially, um, to display in London. I was thinking of somebody like Richard Moss, and if he could produce a site-specific work or sort of work from the Amazon, but there, that would just be incredible. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say. Um, I enjoyed it and I'm really glad I went. I won't be going back again. At the moment, tickets are booking until the 3rd of December. So if you're interested and you like what you've seen, and you're, if you're a Hockney fan who hasn't been yet, do go along.
Don't forget to subscribe to the Art Vlog, hit that notification bell for a smogger's board of new exhibitions coming up over the next few weeks.